This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel. Now, what I'd like to do in this video is um, read you some quotes uh, from some people that uh, I sort of compiled together a few years ago, I believe in 2012. And um, it's related to a couple of other videos that we put out, one of them being our recent video, uh, which was our reading of WikiLeaks Vault 7, uh, which is sort of part one of the information they're releasing. They, they called it Year Zero uh, with, the, with the CIA and the information they're gathering on everyone, uh, how they're using big data. Okay, and, um, and it also falls sort of the, along the same lines of uh, the reading of a previous post that I did, which was um, anomalies, prisons, and geophysics, how governments use data, and how to stop them, right? And basically, the theme is um, sort of just posing a question to us, right? Um, which direction do we really want to go with technology, with big data? How do we want our society to be structured, right? Because we're sort of at a crossroads right now where um, one path is going to take us the road um, which uh, Vault 7, WikiLeaks Vault 7 is really telling us the direction that governments want to take us down, right? Which is sort of a dystopian society where there is no concept of privacy, there is no concept of anonymity, and there is really no concept of free speech, right? And the other path is sort of the path along the lines of where the internet uh, technology is used uh, to free us, to give us more liberty, to allow us to have uh, uh, freedom of expression, um, free speech, to have an open discourse where nothing is really taboo and everything is brought out to to be discussed. Right? There is, there is in that path. There, there are no gatekeepers. There are no. Uh, no topics which are prohibited. There are no ideas which are prohibited, right? So we're sort of going down this path where, you know, this way or that way. And, um, you know, this, uh, this became pretty much uh, the theme of uh, anyone that, that's been online for a long time. Pretty early on, it became pretty, pretty, pretty clear that the powers that be, those who control, uh, who have controlled information for a very, very long time, would like to obtain control of that information. And those who are uh, more open to sharing information and believe that uh, information should be accessible to everyone uh, started sort of pushing back towards the powers that be, right? And this has happened throughout history. It's just not now, but right now is, is huge because with the advent of the internet, with the advent of technology, uh, where we are, uh, the flow of information is quite rapid, right? As examples in the past, you know, you can take a look at the Library of Alexandria, right? Where, you know, there was the uh, largest library in the world known at the time Put together where information from around the world was coming to one place where scholars and um, I mean the the society there had its own problems there's a lot of slavery and oppression and stuff like this but it was a place where people could come and select people I guess could come and seek out information and learn right we've also seen this um, at the pushback from the powers that be when um, the, Guten, um, the Gutenberg printing press was, uh, was invented, right? The people that didn't want the printing press to go into full production were the bankers, were, uh, was the state, uh, were religious institutions, right? Because they thought that the general public could not handle that information coming in. They weren't they wouldn't be able to process that information, right? And we're sort of in the same state right now, okay? Uh, and I've written other pieces uh, along the lines of anomalies, prisons, and geophysics, and um, shared other, other information, the one I'm reading right now, where, uh, you know, I compiled some info together, where the, we're sort of showing where the internet's being censored, filtered, and throttled, and just giving you guys examples and stuff like this. but. I want to read this to you because uh, I rather have other people, people that are well known, 
use their words to get this point across. Okay. So I'm just going to read you the title, and I provided uh, one short paragraph, well, one long paragraph as an introduction in the sentence, and then it kicks into uh, the quotes from these seven people. And most of you will know um, at least four or five of these seven people, three or four of these seven people, okay? Uh, and the title uh, of this post that I made was... Uh, for the age of the information wars, some pertinent quotes from some pertinent quotes regarding the future of humanity. Okay. And I list the number of and I list the people that I'm quoting. And the people are Stephen Hawkins, Carl Sagan, Isaac Asimov, John F. Kennedy, William Thurston, Jacob Applebaum, and Asata Shakur. Okay. As for uh, my introductory paragraph and you can I'll provide the link to this uh, to this post in uh, the description of this video and when you know if you do decide to go there uh, there are sort of uh, other articles other posts being linked in that in this post uh, especially in the first paragraph of my introductory paragraph where I'm sort of linking either to other posts that I made or external articles that uh, sort of get more of the idea across of some of the topics that I'm mentioning here, some of the um, some of the points that I'm mentioning here. Okay, so if I want to do some further exploration of some of the, you know, what it is that I'm implying and what it is that I'm referencing. Okay, so again, for the age of the information wars, some pertinent quotes regarding the future of humanity. We're in the midst of the we're in the midst of the war on information. This war is being conducted on multiple fronts to control the flow of public discourse on social networks, to control the flow of information on the internet, to centralize power and continue the flow of disinformation by mainstream media, to control public education and continue the indoctrination of the youth, to dismiss evidence and defraud, uh, defund scientific research, and to acquire all private information for all peoples of all nations and consolidate that information into the databases of centralized governments. Below you will find some pertinent quotes regarding, the regarding this war, the war that will decide the future of humanity. We should heed the warnings given and implement the solutions provided. Okay. And, um, and then I sort of list, uh, list the quotes um, uh, the names of the people and you know I broke it down to seven categories and I sort of uh, categorized them based on the information being provided the quotes being given um, and the, the way I've categorized them is not uh, what these people uh, well it is and it's not it's sort of not directly uh, what they were referencing, but it is sort of me categorizing them, right? So the first uh, quote is from Stephen Hawking, and I categorize this as democracy. So uh, I'm, you know, number one, I called it Stephen Hawking's on democracy. And this is a quote uh, that I sort of took out of uh, Black Holes and Baby Universes. I couldn't find it online. I read Black Holes and Baby Universes a few years ago, um, way before this. And it's a quote that stood out to me. And uh, I actually had to go back, and back in 2000, 2012, I guess, I had to type this out, and there's a couple other ones here that I actually have to type out myself, right? So this is a quote by Stephen Hawkins from Black Holes and Baby Universes, page 28, speech given in Ovidia, Spain in 1989. Quote, If we accept that we cannot prevent science and technology from changing our world, we can at least try to ensure that the changes they make are in the right directions. In a democratic society, this means that the public needs to have a basic understanding of science so that it can make informed decisions and not leave them in the hands of experts. Okay. And that was uh, Stephen Hawkins in 1989. The second quote uh, that I have here is from Carl Sagan. And I categorize this as Carl Sagan on personal responsibility. And this is a quote that I took 
from a Carl Sagan interview by Charlie Rose in 1986. And the video um, in the post that I've linked in the description of this video, um, the video is available that you can hear it from him directly. Uh, and I didn't put the times. Um, I might have uh, linked it with the time signal on there, but it's a quote in that video that he gives. Okay. Uh, and number two, Carl Sagan on personal responsibility. Quote, we live in an age based on science and technology with formidable, formidable technological powers. And if we don't understand it, by we, I mean the general public, then who is making all the decisions about science and technology that are going to determine what type of future our children live in? Just some members of Congress? But there is no more than a handful of members of Congress with any background in science at all. And this combustible mixture of ignorance and power, sooner or later, is going to blow up in our faces. And the second reason that I'm worried about this is that science is more than a body, body of knowledge. It's a way of thinking, a way of skeptic, skeptically interrogating the universe with a fine understanding of human fallibility. If we are not able to ask skeptical questions to interrogate those who tell us that something is true, to be skeptical of those in authority, then we are up for grasp with the next charlatan, political or religious, who comes ambling along. It's a thing that Jefferson laid great stress on. It wasn't enough, he said, to enshrine some rights in a constitution or a Bill of, Bill of Rights. The people have to be edu had to be educated and they had to practice their skepticism and their education. Otherwise, we don't run the government. The government runs us. And that's Carl Sagan from 1996. The third quote is... Uh, from Isaac Asimov and it's a column that he wrote in Newsweek in 1980 and I sort of categorize this as uh, Isaac Asimov on ignorance quote there's a cult of ignorance in the United States and there always has been the strain of anti-intellectualism has been a constant threat winding its way through our political and cultural life nurtured by this false notion that democracy means that my ignorance is just as good as your knowledge. Number four is from John F. Kennedy. And uh, I categorize this as John F. Kennedy on information and secrecy. And uh, it's a speech that he gave in 1961 to the media. And um, I've embedded that speech in the post as well. Okay, so if you want to uh, hear these words from him, you can hear it directly from him. Okay. Quote, As a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until we refuse to correct it. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors, and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Solomon decreed a, decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution, not primarily for amu to amuse and entertain, not to en emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even, even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improve understanding of news as well as improve transmission. And it means finally that government of all levels must meet its obligations to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, unconfident that with your help, man will be 
will be what he was born to be, free and independent. Okay. And that's John F. Kennedy in 1961. The fifth quote is a quote by uh, William Thurston. And uh, this is a quote that, uh, a comment that he made in 1994. And uh, it's a piece that he wrote on proof and progress in mathematics. And if you know my work, you know that's pretty close to my heart. Uh, and I categorize this uh, as uh, William Thurston on the language of mathematics. Okay. Quote, we mathematicians need to put far greater effort into communicating mathematical ideas. To accomplish this, we need to pay much more attention to communicating not just our definitions, theorems, and proofs, but also our ways of thinking. We need to appreciate the value of different ways of thinking about the same mathematical structure. We need to focus far more energy on understanding and explaining the basic mental infrastructure of mathematics with consequently less energy on the most recent results. This entails developing mathematical language that is effective for the radical purpose of conveying ideas to people who don't, re who don't already know them. What we mathematicians are producing is human understanding. We have many different ways to understand and many different processes to contribute to our understanding. William Thurston, 1994. Uh, quote number six is um, a speech that Jacob Applebaum gave in 2012. And the topic of the speech was uh, dig Digital Anti-Repression Workshop. Okay. And I guess, I, again, this is related to mathematics to the previous quote. And as you can tell, sort of the quotes follow each other, uh, sort of conveying, conveying one theme, right? And I categorize this as uh, Jacob Applebaum on privacy by design and the power of mathematics. Okay. Quote, privacy by policy is where, where someone says, I promise I won't log any data about you. Okay. How do you guys feel, feel about that promise? Privacy by design is where that data is never produced in the first place. So every time you see a system and it says, I need your name, I need your social security number, I need that stuff, that is a system where they start to implement privacy by policy almost always. They promise they won't disclose all this data. That's policy protection. Policies are weak. Policies that a company are always overwritten by the law of government policy. But no, I love, I love to say this phrase because I think it's fantastic. No amount of violence will ever solve a math problem. They may torture that guy into giving up his password, but you can't take an encrypted message and shoot it with a machine gun and have it decrypt itself. And that sounds totally obvious, but think about that. That means when you use strong mathematics that I can hardly comprehend, when you use that kind of strong mathematics and someone sees an encrypted message, the violence of the state is not actually so useful anymore. Okay. And that full lecture um, is worth watching. Okay. And it is embedded in that post. In my post on the blog okay and uh, and the last quote I have here is uh, from Asata Shakur and I categorize this as Asata Shakur on freedom and I believe uh, this is a quote from 1973 but I'm not 100% sure on this okay uh, and it's a short sentence basically quote no one is going to give you the education you need to overthrow them. Nobody is going to teach you your true history, teach you your true heroes, if they know that that knowledge will help set you free. I thought that quote was uh, sort of pieced together this whole thing quite nicely. 
Uh, and again, uh, this is linked um, in the description of this video if you want to read these and reference these and um, listen to the videos. There's a couple of videos in there, uh, three videos in there actually, that you can hear these words directly from the people that, uh, that wrote them, okay, that gave them. And that sort of ties together with the previous two videos we put together with WikiLeaks uh, Vault 7 Year Zero release and Anomalies Prisons in Geophysics. That's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.